up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i own gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 volkswagen atlas cross sport courtesy of sutliff volkswagen in harrisburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because there is a major refresh for the 2024 model year you also have more power new standard safety a more upscale interior and plenty more of course but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 atlas cross sport first one being the se starting at $36,715 se with technology for $40,655 sel for $47,435 SEL R-Line for $48,885 and the SEL Premium R-Line for $51,445. So the last three trim levels that I named off there, they all come standard with all-wheel drive. The first two though, they come standard with front-wheel drive, but you can add all-wheel drive for an additional $1,900 then if you wanted to do that. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant is new and it is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, putting out 269 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 273 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,600 RPM, power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an 8-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit, 0-60 to 60 time, approximately 6.7 seconds, that is plenty respectable there, top speed if you're interested, 120 miles per hour, with MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 27 on the highway. But so now before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Atlas Cross Sport, I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes, they're actually located just to the left of the uh, front air vent here, and so when you press that, you will get Eco Comfort Sport Custom Off-Road and Snow, that's a lot, adjusting things like the shift points of throttle response and steering sensitivity as well. But so now I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway, let's put the paddle shifters to the test here first, and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, so there is a full manual shift mode, just slide the shifter back one more time, it's actually going to tell you what gear you're in up on the uh, digital gauges here. So right now I am in first, three, two, one, kick it. <laughs> They're fine, and yes, they are quick as well. So as expected, typically Volkswagen and Audi always do an amazing job with their quickness when it comes to their paddle shifter. So absolutely no issues there. They are going to be plenty fun if you wanted to have some fun with them at least. And the other cool thing about having paddle shifters is you can actually use them for a little bit of engine braking. So if it were to be snowing out, let's say, and I'm going down a hill, rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, I could simply just downshift a little bit, do a little bit of engine braking, and I'm less likely to actually slide off the road then. So they are good for that reason as well. But anyways, let's now get back full control to the car. I'm just going to slide the shifter back one more time. And looking at the digital gauges, it's telling me I no longer have control of what gear I am in, which is fine. So let's now go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's actually put it into sport driving mode here. Oh, we already were. I should have known that. And let's test out the acceleration and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, three, two, one, go. But oh, turbo lag. It's going now though. <laughs> yeah, it's actually playing quick. Definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. Having said that, there is a little bit of turbo lag at the very beginning, and that's to be expected with turbocharged four cylinders. Some of the other manufacturers like BMW and Mercedes and Volvo, what they have done to kind of combat that turbo lag is they've added a mild hybrid system, which not only kind of eliminates that initial turbo lag, but it also assists with better MPGs as well. So Volkswagen, if you wanted to do that in the future, that might be just an idea for you. If you want to, don't listen to me though. But anyways, now to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four wheel disc brakes coming standard on this thing. As far as braking fuel goes, since there's nobody behind us, it's fine. Uh, it's a little bit on the softer side, but that's to be expected in SUVs like this. But honestly, I don't mind it. It's just right for what this vehicle actually is. I'll just put it that way. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So 100% not gonna have any issues there. Harrisburg has absolutely horrendous roads. 
and it's actually absorbing the road imperfections quite nicely so no issues there as far as steering feel goes you can notice the difference depending upon the drive mode that you put it in let me just say that i'm still in sport driving mode not because i care about the acceleration right now but because i like that heavier weight to the steering so that is why i've left it there so I do like the heavier weight right now, but as an experiment, let me go ahead and take it out of that sport driving mode. And it is a 100% looser steering feel, more, more in tune with what you typically will find in SUVs, that kind of a loose steering feel. So I like the sporty steering feel. That's just my personal preference, but touching on cabin noise, we're going 30 miles per hour right now. Not a whole lot of road noise or wind noise really coming into the cabin at all. I do have the air conditioning on right now. So if anything, you guys are probably hearing that. Then touching on visibility, looking out my rear view mirror here, it's not as good as the Atlas, obviously, because of the styling of the cross sport. It's a little sleeker looking in the back, so. But having said that, it's not bad. I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror, so I personally wouldn't have any issues there. I'll just put it that way. Rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on this thing, and if you wanted to head up display, simply go with the SEL trim level and up. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 volkswagen atlas cross sport all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 volkswagen atlas cross sport finished in deep black pearl if you're a pirates of the caribbean fan this one is 100 percent for you let's go ahead and check out the VIN let's start with where this one is made take a look at the VIN first character is the number one indicating that the Atlas cross sport at least for us US customers here is built and assembled in the US gotta love it but let's go ahead and start up front on this one revised front grille as I mentioned at the beginning of the video looks good in my personal opinion with the integrated light bar with the SE with technology trim level and up so that's gonna be kind of that uh, light bar at the very top of the front grille integrating the daytime running lights I love that and illuminated front and rear logos if you go with the SE with technology trim level and up. And in case I haven't mentioned it already, I don't know if I have, I don't remember, but we do have that SE with technology trim level with us here today. So that's what you guys are looking at. And I love those illuminated logos. That's typically an option with Mercedes Benz, but, uh, but Volkswagen does it pretty darn good. I like the look of it. But LED headlights do come standard with LED daytime running lights, of course. You do get an adaptive front lighting system as well. Now, that's usually an added option with luxury brands. So the fact that Volkswagen put that as standard for all trim levels on the Atlas Crossport is wonderful. Essentially what that is, is when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend, so you're less likely to hit a deer or a bear or a moose or whatever large alien that jumps out in front of you. So I do love that. I can't believe all trim levels get that. Automatic feature coming standard, of course. Automatic high beams are gonna come on the SEL trim level and up. So when you have your high beams on at night, that senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim the back to low beams. Then when the vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So love that. And again, there is a revised front bumper for the R-Line trim levels, of course. So since we don't have that one, all of the other trim levels are essentially gonna look the same, but the R-Line, it's gonna be slightly more aggressive. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Very good looking in my opinion, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. So now since we are around to the side of the Atlas Cross Sport, roof rails do come standard actually on every single trim level, love that. Black window surrounds coming standard. Chrome window surrounds though coming with the SEL trim level. Otherwise, you're gonna get that uh, chrome belt line molding, I should have said, um, for the other trims, basically. Crossboard badging found kind of on those front fenders and front doors. I like that little accent piece, that looks good. Body color power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals then as well. As far as the side skirts go, they're gonna differ slightly. You're gonna get matte black side skirts for the non R-line trim levels, but if you were to go with one of those R-line trims, you will actually find body colored side skirts, which is always my personal preference. But quite honestly, with this one being finished in black pearl, it actually looks pretty darn good with the matte black side skirts. It all kind of flows together. But anyways, did take a look down at the wheel setup. 18-inch machined alloys for the SE, 20-inch machined alloys for the SE with technology, SEL, and SEL R-Line trim levels, and then 21-inch machined alloys for the SEL premium R-Line. So overall, I personally love the look on the side profile of the Atlas Cross Sport compared to the Atlas. I think it looks so much more aggressive. Kind of looks like a baby Lamborghini Urus, I guess you could say. But anyways, I love it. That pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now let's see our round to the back of this one, all the way to the top. Body colored shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. And gotta love these LED taillights. 
definitely looks good. And by the way, LED taillights come standard for every single trim level across the board. That isn't always the case, so gotta emphasize that. But again, revised rear bumper as well, so I did wanna mention that. And I did wanna mention, since we're back here, the R-Line trims are gonna be slightly revised in the back compared to the other trim levels. You're gonna get kind of a more aggressive look in the back, including a gloss black rear diffuser and kind of a dual exhaust look as well. But that is not what we have today. But just underneath, you actually do find dual exhaust outlets tucked away, so having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Atlas Crossport, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a manual tailgate for the SE trim level. However, all other trim levels, including our SE with technology and up, will get a power tailgate. So there is a button on the uh, key fob itself. There's also a button on the tailgate itself, of course, as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 40.3 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, there, of course, is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down quite flat as well, bumping that up to 77.8 cubic feet with all seats down. That's pretty darn impressive, actually. There's some three-row SUVs that actually come in at around that. So I like that space. But 12-volt power outlet does come standard back there there's also some grocery bag hooks as well a little bit of storage in the corners tie down anchors of course and then if you were to lift up underneath of that um, cargo floor you will find a spare tire and you could probably put a nice scraper within that little section as well but anyways then making our way up to the rear legroom that's going to come in at a very impressive 40.4 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there you can find rear ventilation back there that does come standard there's rear charging ports there's actually 115 volt power outlet back there as well so you could charge up your drill or hair straightener or whatever so that's pretty cool i like seeing that heated second row seats are going to come standard on the sel trim level and up rear window sunshades though coming standard on the se with technology trim level and up so i am able to show those to you guys so they were pretty darn good i always like rear window sunshades for like newborns and stuff like that but then make your way up to the front seats power adjustable driver's seat for all trim levels heated front seats all trim levels leatherette seating all trim levels ventilated front seats get this all trim levels ventilated front seats are typically an option even in like bmw or mercedes so the fact that they come standard on the atlas cross sport is pretty amazing leather seating is going to come on the sel trim level and up and honestly seat comfort has been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today so absolutely no issues with that but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leatherette wrapped for the non r-line trim levels but then leather wrapped for the r-line trim levels and i do like that it's kind of a flat bottom as well that's a pretty cool design element to it but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key you got your volkswagen logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and the times two button that is going to be your remote start which does come standard on the se with technology trim level and up but ultimately it's all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just in front of the shifter and by the way since the shifter is a little bit different than other manufacturers to put it in drive you pull it back towards you to put it in reverse you push it towards the engine start button and then the p is going to be obviously the park button but anyways once started up there is going to be a 10.3 inch digital gauge cluster that comes standard for all trim levels across the board that is pretty darn cool i absolutely love that and of course there is a view button on the steering wheel if you press that it completely changes the look of those digital gauges giving you a bunch of different loadouts really allowing you to make it your own so i always love digital gauges and typically volkswagen and audi do it pretty darn good however i do wish there was a little more color options with the gauges not just the blue although the blue doesn't look bad but either way gauges are amazing gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature pretty much everything you can possibly want up there but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality wireless phone charger comes standard for all trim levels auto dimming rear view mirror also standard for all trims dual zoom climb control all trim levels yet again sel trim level and up is going to give you 30 different colors of ambient lighting 
that's pretty cool. And also a panoramic moonroof for that SEL trim level and up if you wanted that option. But our line trims are gonna give you stainless steel pedals. But overall, like I said at the beginning of the video, I heard that the Atlas Cross Sport has got better interior quality and I gotta admit, it does. This thing looks really darn good. Got contrast stitching on the doors, a lot of soft touch material, kind of this uh, brushed aluminum look, although I believe that is definitely plastic, but still it looks pretty darn good. And it kind of continues right around the gauges as well, which is probably my favorite part of that look because typically manufacturers won't put a design around the gauges like the Atlas Crossport did here. And I like that. And the other really cool thing about the interior quality is to actually turn on the LED interior lighting, you simply just kind of press on it. So there's not actually a physical button. So don't look for one. You simply just kind of touch that interior light and it's going to turn on for you. And that's the same way to turn it off. So that's kind of interesting. But just in front of the cup holders, you have a little bit of rubberized storage in your wireless phone charger, a couple USB charging ports. And to the right of the shifter is where your cup holders are at. You got a little bit of storage just behind that and a ton of storage within the center armrest for sure. So interior quality, they actually did pretty darn good. I got to admit, but now let's go ahead and take a look at this infotainment screen because this thing is massive. And so coming standard, you will find a 12 inch color touchscreen display. You get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. There is a factory navigation system for the SEL trim level and up. So we don't have it with us here today. And you got a lot of other fun stuff as well, like news, sports and things like that. But anyways, you can also check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, you're going to find six speakers for all trim levels, but that very top trim level, the premium. Premium R-Line is going to give you a Harman Kardon sound system. So having said that, we do of course have the six speaker sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, so it's six speakers. Keep that in the back of your mind. But for six speakers, there's actually a decent amount of bass that comes with that. So I didn't have any issues with the bass. Again, with the clarity, it's six speakers. So it's not going to be as good as the Harman Kardon, of course. If you wanted a better sound system, go with that Harman Kardon. But that's actually not a bad sound system, having said that for six speakers. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Atlas Crossboard in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always it's going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking, lane change assist, rear cross traffic alert, and then the premium is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, great styling. This thing truly looks like a Lamborghini Urus in Volkswagen form. So absolutely love it. Great tech as well. They did a great job on upgrading the tech in this thing. I love the digital gauge cluster. I love the massive infotainment screen as well. So wonderful job there, Volkswagen. Rear seat legroom over 40 inches. Typically what I say in my reviews is anything over 40 inches is luxury rear seat legroom. That is S-class good, man. I absolutely love that. As far as room for improvement goes, there is a little bit of turbo lag. So like I mentioned at the beginning, if Volkswagen would add maybe a mild hybrid system or even a full hybrid system, that would really improve everything in terms of both miles per gallon and also the turbo lag itself. So wouldn't mind that. But overall, this thing is pretty darn nice. I definitely don't have any issues here, but let me know what you think of the Atlas Cross Sport in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.